The junior X30 drivers are in the waiting zone. Let's have a look at how this grid lines up. Alex Johnson will be first from Benedict Davis. Macy Hitter third. Vinnie Lloyd Chamberlain in fourth. Jude Finiho and Olivier Algieri in sixth place. Jaden Gregg, Rio Kamata, Sam Baker and Scott Smith rounding out the top ten from Mackenzie Stevens and Christian Brooks. Thirteenth will be Daniel Hackett, Milo Pilford, Thomas Mullet, Kyle Slee, Lucas Ellingham and Joshua Patterson in 18th place, Dane Tucker, Jerome Phillip, Benjamin Watts, Anis Borchay 22nd, Jolly Pettit 23rd and Finley Harrison in 24th position. Lorenzo Cordell lines up 25th from Charlie Field, Zaki Hussein, Kai Carrington, Kian Gamio and Remy Gilbert in 30th. And the final few positions made up of Rhys Blakely, Hugo Gilbert, Sam Longley and Kyan Gohill, 34th and back off the grid for this final heat race for the X30 Juniors. There we go. Alex Johnston leads them away into oblivion for the first time. Somebody just going onto the grass in oblivion, but shouldn't be anything too serious. And Johnston has been able to retain that lead as they come up the hill for the first time. Looks to me like they've all got through cleanly, which is delightful to see. Yeah, nice sensible first lap there through Christmas Corner, and they can start to take the gloves off at the end of the lap. But uh, again, nice clean start here. Everyone's staying out of trouble. And now they've just established position, can start to race. And oh, oh, one, ri one driver grass track in there, but uh, again, nothing too serious. Yeah, Jude Fernerhoff putting pressure on Benedict Davies to the looks of me in the middle of that. Let's call them as they come through to finish this first lap, though. It is going to be Alex Johnston who leads. He's had the best start he could wish for from pole. Macy Hitter in second. Jude Fernerhoff was challenging Benedict Davis. Has just got up to third place. Rio, Rito Kamata up in fifth. Christian Brooks, Milo Pilford, Sam Baker, Scott Smith and Lucas Ellingham round out your top ten. And that, the last of those drivers, Ellingham, had an absolutely sterling first lap of eight places. But look yeah. who else has also been of eight places on that first lap. A certain Lorenzo Cordal. They just have this ongoing thing today. Definitely. Well, they're, uh, they're matching each other move for move. Lorenzo Cordal, of course, having the uh, disadvantage in this race of a start further down the grid. They've got work to do. So making the most of that first lap. There's some good driving from everyone, really, to stay out of trouble on that first lap. Including those guys towards the back who've got some real pressure to make their way through the field in what's of course a sprint race, not much time to do it. Christian Brooks now ahead of Benedict Davis, so there's definitely been a change around here from fourth downwards. Christian Brooks it is. Benedict Davis in fifth. Rita Kamata, Milo Pilford have changed there. And look at this, this is Jude Fernerhoff having a go here at Macy Hitter, I believe, over second place and has got the job done. So the 53 now ahead of the 33. And now Jude will uh, set about trying to catch up to our lead uh, driver in the form of Alex Johnston. One thing of course that uh, always the same with uh, television cameras anywhere at any track it doesn't always give you an idea of how steep the gradient is in some of these hilly yeah. corners like Christmas Corner if you stand on oblivion that first corner you see on the TV screen look up it is actually quite a steep hill. It is this is on this side as Christian Brooks puts a move in there on Macy Hitter now this uh, this circuit has it, it, it's kind of on the side of a, a, a mild hill really so so Christmas is very much at the top of that. It's this bit now that we're talking about where you climb up the hill and the camera, absolutely right, Chris, does not really do justice to it. If that looks flat to you, it's not. Uh, and indeed, you're now downhill braking into Ashby and that, that's a real change from the yeah. braking zone at Christmas. These are not too similar. One gravity is with you, the other gravity is very much against you and it matters it really makes a difference Definitely. that you can feel in the car it's quite right because christmas corner going into the uphill braking zone so as soon as you back off effectively you've almost got the accelerator acting as a brake almost because you've got the gravity working against you like you say all the way around on the downhill rito kamata there with one of the best moves in oses i've seen all day on benedict davis that was from a long way back and beautifully judged on the brakes absolutely perfect alex johnston still leads but is being reeled in by Jude Fernerhoff and Christian Brooks is coming with him. In fact, yeah. is he coming with him or is he wanting to get by him? He's wanting to get by him to the inside at Christmas and through goes Christian Brooks. Christian Brooks, he's on the move here, isn't he? he? Is. I think he's set the fastest lap. That's the man 46.06. The pace of the race is starting to pick up. Alex Johnston, 48, your race leader, has done a great job of holding on to the lead. As you head towards the second half of the race, it's been a good, clean race so far. And Fernihov has uh, lost out to Christian Brooks. Now there he is, the 82 of Brooks in second position. And well, it looks to me like Brooks has steadily picked his way through the field, now through to second place and putting in some good steady laps. Definitely one to watch in the closing stages. Yeah, absolutely. On to lap number six then. Alex Johnston 
Well, he's setting a personal best, but it's not enough to deal with the race best of Christian Brooks, a 45.85, and he'll be beginning to get wise to the fact that the pack are closing in on him here. We've got this breakaway group of three of Johnston, Brooks, and Fernerhoff. Macy here to still doing well to hold him forth. Milo Pilford haven't mentioned yeah. much. Definitely his best heat of the day so far uh, at present. But we need to keep eyes here because Christian Brooks is looking very racy to me. Uh, I don't could be lining up for boot possibly. He's staying yeah. on the back here of the 48. Uh, here we go into boot. Brooks might have a look, or will he hold on now and try and look a bit further ahead, look towards Christmas corner? He's got to get boot correct here. He's not going to go for the pass at the moment, but this could be important now. Let's have a look what Brooks does out of the final corner through the oblivion first two corners. And yeah, he's right on the back wheels here. He's might drift a little bit wide here. Go for the cutback. Oh, but look oh. at that. 40. Well, Johnson's wise to him there. Shut the door on him, but no, he's not giving up. Opened it again, though. Yeah, yeah that is through. And through two is going to go Jude Ferner off side by side, and then by Inkermans, which is that little right hand kink before the run to Ashby. Got it done, and there's yellow flags there because someone's Driver gone well off Ashby. there. Uh, looks okay. Well, he's just getting checked over, actually, by one of the marshals. Uh, I think there's two carts down there. Yeah, I can quite possibly. See. Yeah, there's two drivers yeah. just out of strut here. Drivers appear to be okay, so it's, I think it's your typical getting it wrong on the braking for Ashby sort of incident where two drivers go off into the barriers. Yep. Yeah. Oh, we've got a full course yellow, uh, over. Yeah, yeah, they've all slowed yeah, down. Yeah, we, we are. So we just, whilst uh, they're making sure, because obviously if, if the pack came around next time and had a major incident again in Ashby, they'd be hitting into some already stricken carts. Yeah, so the, it's a um, uh, right call there. It's one of these things, Ashby, it's a uh, tight right-hander off cambered, so effectively the barriers are doing a good job there. It's your protection, really, if somebody gets it totally wrong, and with, with I think there are medics going to check the drivers. They don't want to have personnel on the track if somebody else gets it wrong. Yep. We've seen a few of these today, uh, full-course yellows, perhaps more than uh, we're used to seeing. I think, it's, uh, I think it's worked well as a way of where it is appropriate to keep the race going whilst yeah, incidents are attended so. to. I think it's been a, a useful tool for uh, the clerk of the course to uh, have reached for. So, Actually, um, uh, listening to that, I was listening to the marshal briefing this morning and one of the instructions given out to the marshals was try, obviously, don't call a, a red flag. It's one of these things, of course, if it needs to be a red flag, there has to be one, but use a five second rule to check the drivers are okay and then if it is more serious perhaps ask for a stoppage then yeah yeah to be clear i mean we've seen already today red flags used where where it is appropriate um so it's, it's they're definitely using them when they need to but but also just using that tool um as an option uh where appropriate a full course yellow just gives them the opportunity for if it's not a an immediate concern maybe they're just checking over maybe, you know nothing that stops them from going to an fcy and then if it turns out to be more That's serious one of the 51 there was hitting trouble previously i think it was one of the drivers possibly caught in that incident on ashby hugo gilbert yeah but uh nothing to stop them doing an fcy and then if the incident does prove to be uh, more of a concern Oh, as we've got some carts uh, starting to litter the track here. Uh, that's kind Glow of Glow Hill. Hill. Well, maybe this is why the FCY is there. It's not just for the incident in Ashby. They've suddenly gone, got a few uh, carts, you know. Yeah, there's two or three stranded. hitting trouble there. So, uh, yeah, that's the yeah, yeah, Glow Hill. There's the pack going by a, a go-kart at the side of the road. Now, uh, they may need to make a call as to whether or not that is in a position that they deem to be a concern. And uh, right they will be to do so if it ensures that we have safe racing when we get underway again. But what this is going to do is it's turning this into, well, if we get a green flag this time around, it's going to be a one lap sprint. Yeah. And if we don't, it's going to be the victory confirmed for Christian Brooks. Important to say here, of course, we are in a full course yellow, so it is a neutralised race. But they are still racing, of course, aren't they? It's, uh, there is the possibility if they make a mistake and spin off under full course yellow, oh, yeah. it's yeah, still yeah. a race. So. Uh, Although it is neutralised at the moment, they can't battle. How many years ago was it now that Montoya and Michael Schumacher collided in that tunnel at Monaco? Yeah, that's it, of course. That's a very good example to use there, actually. They, you see, the pace has dropped to over a minute now, so they really have backed off of here and dropping off the pace now. I think Brooks here is anticipating it going green for the final lap, possibly really backing them up through boots. The pass has been cleared behind them, so... Yep, green flag. So Christian Brooks, a textbook rolling start there, trying to drop... Fernihoff in second, Johnson third as they scream through Oblivion for the final time. One lap dash to the finish, but Christian Brooks, as we saw in boot, really backing them up, and he got that one nailed. Yep, Rito Camato going defensive against Lucas Ellingham there, and it works for him. I think Camato has done really well to hold position throughout this race. Jude Fernihoff under a lot of pressure from Alex Johnston as well over second place. 
Uh, still Lucas Ellingham can't gasp, get by Rita Kamata and is under pressure now from the 39 of Scott Smith as well. Sam, Sam Baker's managed to accrue a penalty uh, but it looks to me like Christian Brooks has just got to keep this one together. Oh, Look at this selling the there. dummy there from Johnson. Alex Johnston but it doesn't pay off unless he can tuck his nose under and I don't think he can. He's got to be careful of Macy Hitter as well but Christian Brooks will take the win in X30 Juniors heat number three. Jude Fernerhoff holds on for second, Alex Johnston for third, Macy Hitter, Milo Pilford, good drive to fifth, Lucas Ellingham uh, in sixth place. Uh, so sorry, Rita Kamata was not able to hold off Ellingham. It might have been Milo Pilford who I was Pilfold who I was calling yeah, that for. Pilford. 